Welcome to Deep Thought. We need a critical mass with expanded consciousness. I'm going to tell you what, most of the problems in this world are because people, the overwhelming majority, 99% of people, operating with a limited consciousness. You know, they only use a small part consciously aware of themselves on using using consciously using a small part of their brain now as i said in the last one you you get a smart aleck say well science says we use 100 percent of our brain no your body does that's subconscious your your subconscious is over 90 percent of your brain and you got the information it's using all that taking in all the information but how much of it are you conscious of you know, when you're walking down the street, how much do you, how much do you, are you consciously aware of? And when I say conscious, you know, are you aware of every smell, every single sound? Are you consciously even thinking about every single sight in your line of sight? That's how deep that consciousness thing goes. And I'm going to tell you what, and it's more than just having like information and knowledge, but just awareness of how to move through the world. Indeed, that's the that's the reason why the they's actually control people. The them's actually control people. They don't use force. People think they use force. No, they just put up fences and people just going along like the herd. But what happens if you get a critical mass of people who expand their consciousness? And a critical mass doesn't mean 100%. Critical mass could be as below is 13%. But that critical mass, they are in positions. They're in positions to take down fences. They're in positions to influence the way that the herd goes. See, a reality is no matter what, there's always going to be a herd. There's always going to be the masses. And, and, and the reason it's not an evil thing, it's just people are at different levels of consciousness. they raised up. But what if you have a critical mass of people in the right position, the right places where they can be shepherds? They can be to those who tear down the fences. And instead, and even if they put up fences, they directing people in such a way that they are raising their conscience. Like you've had societies on the planet that uh, where the population routinely raised their consciousness to a higher level. But unfortunately, you know, those those societies have faded away. And we haven't had such a uh, society in man, at least a few hundred years. I think there was one, there was a recent one in um, the South America region. I got to check on that. Sometimes when I'm going on this flow, I just, you know, some just come to me. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I need to look that up. Because you know how I do. I'm just stream of consciousness on here. But... I want y'all to think about that. What if we had a growing amount? Now, you do have some people with expanded consciousness, but they're not in position to influence people. And let me be clear. Someone could be a billionaire. Someone could be a billionaire and still not in a position. They might be a little bit above the herd, but they might be following the same um, fences. They still fenced in. Some of them. Now, some of them help them put up the fence, but, you know, that's another conversation. <laughs> but what if you had that? That would be a powerful thing, like to raise their consciousness. Like, for example, what if you live in an area? What if someone lives in an area, they have an expanded consciousness, and they start, just by who they are, they start to affect people in the area. It could be a poor area. Right. Like, uh, for example, I remember back in 1984, I was working um, a summer job in this very poor area in the D.C. area. Um, I've drove past there. It's gentrified now. But at the time, it's one of the worst neighborhoods in the D.C. area. And I mean, part of my job was it was a crew of us. We were literally cleaning the area up. Literally cleaning the area up, cutting grass, removing trash and everything. But I remember there was one small house there, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Now, I thought about that. It was a, uh, they told me it was a woman who lived there. And, but her consciousness was starting to affect other people. See, that's an example. Small, that's, that's, an, that's an example, you know, just by her presence. 
Also, what if you have uh, someone who's a school teacher with an expanded consciousness? Then they could be just a high school teacher. But, you know, they stay at a school for, let's say they stay for a long time, 30 years. How many students have come through there that that teacher has affected with their consciousness? Because, you know, sometimes people see that teacher more than they see their own parents. That could be something. Or what if that teacher decides to open up their own school with their own curriculum and a part of it is just uh, giving uh, encouraging classes, activities, and everything to expand that consciousness. Or take someone with the expanded consciousness. They say, you know, I'm going to be a filmmaker. You know, so I'm going to make films on this level, even though on the surface it seems like entertainment, but it's actually making people think. It's expanding it. So you got people in different areas where they can influence. They can, they could be a YouTube content creator. Now, if we have a critical mass of these people in different areas, and like I say, it could be different areas. They could, they could just be, they could be in a prison. They could be, they could be in a prison. They could have, especially a, a spiritual movement. You know, they could be, and they could be in one of the, uh, the established religious paths. You know, they could be a politician. Now you have a critical mass of these people with their consciousness operating at a higher level, more conscious use of their brain. Let's, let's throw out a number. Say if they've raised their uh, brain consciousness to where they're using 20%, consciously using 20 like they're aware of it. But they say, look, we're going to change everything. Because one of the things, they don't have to be in an organization to change it. Because here's, here's one of the great secrets. When people reach a certain level of consciousness, true awakeness, true wokeness, true awareness, they all tend to evolve. They all tend to inspire evolution. Even if they, not, they don't have to know each other, speak the same language, even have the same written plan. Everybody's going in the same direction. That's all you need. That's all you need. You need a, a, crit, a critical mass of people with expanded consciousness. And then they just doing their thing. There's no, me, there's no need for a meeting. There's no need for a meeting. There's no need for an uh, organization with minutes and a president and everything. There's no need for all of that because they're automatically just going in one direction, a, a place of evolution. And that's the important thing to understand. That's the important thing, because that's all you really need, because ultimately, ultimately, I mean, yeah, you have governments and everything and all of that, but it would, uh, it wouldn't, um, you know, that's basically to make fences and everything. But I'm going to tell you what, and here, here's the vision. Here's the vision. Say you get a critical mass. Now, I say a minimum 13. What if it goes even higher? Say if you get just 25%. 25% globally. That would change everything overnight. That would change everything overnight. One, I'm going to tell you what, a lot of evil would disappear. A lot of evil. A lot of stuff. Because when people do those things, they actually operate at a lower level of consciousness when they do stuff for themselves. You know? When you get, it, it could be on small things. Like you get people, always see people, they smoking and they throw, they driving and smoking and they throw their cigarette butt out on the street, out on the road. What if they just did that one simple thing? Just stop doing it. You know, just say, hey, I'm not going to litter. Boom. I'm just going to keep my area clean. Boom. You know, I'm not going to try to... Uh, steal from somebody or try to con them. Like during this time, you know, still get, get you get those phone calls, somebody trying to run a scam on you. People, if they raise their consciousness to a higher level, they're like, no, I don't need to do this. All of a sudden, a lot of things change. A lot of, uh, in fact, if you look at a lot of the control mechanisms, they exist because uh, of the consciousness. Now, it is said uh, that in Kemet, which is known to the Western world as Egypt, but it was once known as Kemet, that they went several thousand years without needing any type of police force. That's because they were at a certain level of consciousness. If, In fact, if you notice, in, even in communities now, you got communities that are virtually crime-free. 
But what is the difference? The people there, they don't even, cops don't even come through there. But the real issue is the people there operating at a certain level of consciousness that nothing's happening in that place. And if they do have something that does happen, it's usually from someone outside that community. But imagine you have a critical mass of people who raise their consciousness. I guarantee you won't need the police force as much. You won't need the security as much. Because people will raise their consciousness past the point they would need to do those things. You know? And also, it would even change the... It would change everything. Because if you look at... uh, like the sicknesses that we have, a lot of it is can be changed just by a change of behavior. And it's deep. It's a deep thing. And we need that in this world. That's the thing that will change everything. And, you know, I do my part to help. So anyway, I want y'all to think on that. Really think on that. Really think on if people, stuff, how stuff would change if people raise their consciousness where they're not trying to scam people. They're not trying to rob people. They're not doing anything to destroy their cells. You know, they're not using substances that are hurt. You know, they're being more sensible in how they're treating one another. You know, we think on that really. So, anyway, that's all we have for today. Y'all have a great weekend. Peace and blessings.